Ed Martell from the Overhead Athletic Institute. Today we're gonna to show you how we work with an athlete using our phase specific throwing program to alter the angle of his elbow so that he avoids stress to the ulnar collateral ligament. Ed Martell, the OAI. Today what we're gonna to show you in a video analysis is what we initially saw with the thrower who had some history of elbow problems, but he's got a very flexible thoracic spine, and you can see when he comes through the acceleration phase of the throwing motion from late cocking, his elbow is still ascending when he's going into maximal external rotation, and the ball, he's going from in, internal to external, and you can see he reaches maximum external rotation with his arm behind the scapular plane, which causes traction, which causes joint distraction and shear of the ulna on the humerus. So this was a few of his initial throws when we started work with him. So I'd like to show the before and after. And he's got a lot of transverse plane mobility. And you can see he kind of throws more rotationally, which you can see with athletes. I mean, sometimes there are certain athletes who do throw more rotationally, but it really depends on what they do with their arm and the ball during that rotational movement that determines and predicts whether or not you're going to deal with an athlete who has some sort of discomfort. So you can see his follow-through is more in the transverse plane. And that's on flat ground because oftentimes, like we said, we're dealing with athletes recovering from injury. So we're prohibited from looking at the full motion. Many times when we're working athletes, I, I always ask my patients whether or not they're going to, if they have any video of them throwing prior to their injury. And a lot of times they do, which is very, very influential. And it teaches you a lot about how the athlete moves. So I want you to see the slow motion movement as he goes into maximal external rotation. The elbow's ascending. And now he spends too much time in maximal external rotation. And now I've got a coupling of forces which increases stress to the ulnar collateral ligament. And when the ball is coming around his body, he's already elongating his lever arm. And now, once again, right there, you can see his follow-through. He's going to have to use more of his infraspinatus and teres to decelerate his arm than if he let his chest continue forward and change the EMG profile of his shoulder, his rotator cuff, during that deceleration phase. So... Very interesting presentation. A lot of times you're dealing with subtleties that you have to look at over and over and over again to see where it is that you can make the most impactful change as quickly as possible. So in the next video, what we're going to do is we're going to show you what we've done using the phase-specific throwing program. And with him, it was once again, you know, teaching him the apexes of the throw as well as elbow approximation. But every athlete's different. So a lot of times the specific fixed progression that you have to use with one athlete can be the exact opposite for another athlete. So you have to look at how they're built. You have to look at their thoracic mobility. You have to look at when they rotate towards the target, how far their chest is forward, what kind of flexibility they have in their hamstrings. Do they supinate? We have another athlete that does an abnormal excessive supination and so he unlocks his joint too early in the acceleration phase, and he deals with tricep pain. So there's a whole host of issues that go into evaluating an athlete to determine whether or not you can do something to try and alter their mechanics. And identification is the first component, which I found to be very lacking in the athletic community. You know, there's a lot of different software out there that can slow things down to a fraction of a second. But if you don't know what's going on, you know, in the joint itself, it's very difficult to determine what kind of progression you're going to need to fix this athlete. So in our next video, we'll go into a follow-up video where he's actually progressed off the mound, and you'll see the difference in how he positions his arm and how he lifts his arm, because everything leads to something else. If you do something different in the initial stages of the throw, it will lead to a different pathway. And the whole goal of what we do at the OEI is to change the pathway of the athlete's throw so that they reduce stress. There's no way to eliminate that stress, but they reduce stress and put themselves in a much more biomechanically stable position and use what we know about anatomy to try and do everything we can to impact how they throw so that they're safer and they recover from their injuries 
as quickly as possible. I've said it multiple times, people re-injure themselves because they return to the throwing exactly the way they threw prior to the injury. That has to be altered and it's, all, it's often the missing component. So we'll show that in the next video. So he was a very quick study, which is not often the case when you're dealing with young athletes. Yes, this is an athlete. You know, we're, we're confronted with some people who have somewhat of an unrealistic expectation, but you know, the better the athlete, the quicker they develop that kinesthetic awareness. But now, one of the things that we had him do is how he took the ball out of his glove, maintaining rotation in the chest towards the left, and then lifting it more in internal rotation. So his scapular pinch was previously much more, or happened when he was rotating earlier towards the target and his arm was already in external rotation and we forced him to bring the ball closer to the center of rotation and you can see there's still some work to be done but now in this position right there you'll see him slowly bring his elbow up and over and now maximal external rotation happens with his elbow much more in front of the scapular plane and now his elbow's on a descending pathway which reduces stress to the ulnar collateral ligament and now his chest is much further forward towards the target so there's the visual velocity that I hear people talk about but it's really just you know the perception of velocity as a result of re you know releasing the ball much closer to the target than most of the athletes you're competing against so the biggest thing that we do is we work from the end of the throw for backwards and then we use randomization to try and teach the athlete to develop that m new muscle memory to force them into positions to accelerate the ball so that they learn and can take that into the full throw. So as I said earlier, this was a very quick study, which was great, but we're still working on his leg position and hip position because he drops his front hip just a little earlier than what we'd like, which causes him to hike his hip at the end of the throw. So a very good example of some how quickly you can alter an athlete's throwing mechanics by just using pre-positioning, taking everything into account. So it's not enough to tell them to get the ball in front of their face and pronate and then make sure they approximate their elbow. You have to, t you have to tell them what to do with their left shoulder. Tell them what to do with their thoracic spine. Tell them how to maintain weight on their back leg. You know, so there's a lot of things that come into play, but it's very important to see the difference so that you, know, you understand what the goal of the throwing motion is, is trying to move your body through stable positions quickly and protect your arm and allow you to maximize the muscles that are the prime movers. So, you know, like I said, this is his, I think, third time we've witnessed him, second time we've witnessed him. And so, just based on, I've, I've done it a hundred times where I've just had someone throw, have them go through different apexes, and then have them throw again, and it's, especially with the younger athletes, they, it's almost impossible for them to throw like they used to. So, you know, we did a serratus press with full forward trunk flexion and then hamstring elongation as an exercise to reinforce his body's ability to get out over his front leg. So that's something we're doing also is working on strengthening his body and his core and you know, you're looking at hip mobility. We did that. We're looking at hip extension mobility. We're, we are, we're working on that. But the biggest thing is we saw a little bit of quad weakness and then some valgus in his knee, which was, I think, in part because he threw more in the transverse plane. A lot of times you'll change someone's apexes and teach them to approximate and bring the ball more towards the center of rotation so that when they do elongate their arm, it happens later. And you'll see behind the athlete that the changes that you knew were necessary change themselves. So, you know, not that that discredits or in any way, you know, diminishes the importance of the strengthening component that has to happen in combination with altering someone's mechanics because you have to look at it from a physical perspective and a biomechanical perspective and say, okay, what can I do to change this athlete's mechanics so that when they throw, they can do it more efficiently and protect themselves from unnecessary injury. So his injury was obvious in the beginning, his elbow was ascending, you know, and now you can see here, it's a little bit delay, and the ball's coming from inside and then moving its way to outside, and we do not have a, a video of this throw from behind, but that's even more illuminating when you see the difference between what he first did and what he does now. So, another video lesson, 
but we just wanted to make sure people understood how important it was to be able to make the changes that have to happen and then teach them how to randomize things it make it difficult for them to do and know what type of progressions they need to to work through to make that change permanent this is something that you have to continually work on and so we've developed a progression for him and he's working on that and we'll see him again you know our goal with every one of the athletes that we work with is to try to see them less and less so that they have their own system of you know correcting their mechanics